to be with you again. Welcome to another episode of Youth and Politics. Today we've got two guests with us, and I'm going to introduce them in a bit, just, as I, just after I tell you our social media handle. I'd like you guys to know that you can reach out to us, you can join the conversation on Twitter, that is Y254 channel, as well as Facebook, Y254 channel, and Instagram, Y254 underscore channel. Please continue to converse with us. We'd love to hear your views. And now to our guests, I'd love to introduce you to our first one. Uh, Bernard Wakoli. Bernard Wakoli. Bernard Wakoli, please tell us what you do. Okay, I'm a political expert and uh, uh, governance and political expert. Okay, governance uh, and political expert. Okay, sure. you're in the right place. <laughs> We're glad to have you. Thank you very much. And our second guest. Yeah, my name is Kaisu. I'm not new here. Yeah. I'm a, <coughs> I'm a, a journalist here at White 54. And again, I'm a student leader. I lead all my students at the University of Nairobi. You lead all my students yes. at the University of Nairobi. Yes. You're yes. a journalist here. I'm a journalist yeah. here. Yeah, I'm very, by the way, I've seen you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gla I'm glad to have you on the same table. Thank you. Mm. Karibu Nisana. Uh, yes. So today we're actually going to start off with something that I think a lot of Kenyans have been quite passionate about and it's been on the tongue of many people, the VC resigning and making his views clear that he does not want um, our DP to vie in the two 2022 elections. And I wanted to ask how exactly you feel about that. And although it has been going through a process, what do you feel this means? What do you think is behind all of this? Do you feel like there's a motive? There's something funny about Kenyan politics, Joy. Something that, funny. Uh, yeah, that politics start immediately after elections. <gasps> like, when did we do elections? Did we, they are barely one year in office. Yes. 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 Yeah. And politics is already hot. And it is hot, hot mm. like you can drop it if you catch it. Mm. Like, like we have election next month or something. Yeah. You know, USA is doing its election next year, 2020. Mm. And there's no active politics in USA now. They are waiting for the right time. Yeah. But as in Kenya, there's <laughs> politics all through. Every day. Like, like after swearing in of, of those who've taken office, yes. politics start immediately. Mm. So that is what is like, uh, like funny about Kenya. That is what is not, uh, what is not there about Kenya. Mm. Yes. So, mm, it is uh, it is what now should be addressed. Uh, it, that is now the way of Kenya. So we understand it's okay. our unique attribute. Yes. Yes. Okay. And um, how about you? <laughs> What's your? Thank you very much you for having me here today. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, welcome, viewers. In my considered opinion, I feel um, failing to plan is planning to fail, oh, and okay. uh, electro cycle. Uh, just to depart from what my colleague is, uh, is talking about, electoral cycle starts immediately after casting your vote. And uh, for any serious politician, you start planning the five years from the time uh, a ballot paper is cast. The moment you vote, uh, that's when you start looking for the, uh, for the uh, lifespan of the five-year span. So any serious politician should now be organizing himself, raising resources, you know, planning his teams. If you want to vie for, for the 2022 seat, you don't wait till 2020 or 2019 or 20. Then you wake up from uh, uh, sleep somewhere and say you want to, uh, to, to vie for a political seat. So it's normal, it's uh, obvious for anybody who is interested and who is serious yes. about uh, running for a political seat to start organizing himself. Right. Looking at the the Murad issue, I saw it coming because uh, uh, when you look at the formation of Jubilee, Jubilee was not um, like uh, established as a, a single party. This is a conglomeration of many political parties that came together. Others like the, the, the Kalem and Dile's party were swallowed and uh, now Kalem and Dile is nowhere to be seen. But uh, the major parties were URP and uh, TNA that came together to form the, the, Jubilee, uh, the Jubilee party. Yes. Uh, so the, all these people have interests. And you remember Ruto's party had uh, 
was actually the third majority party in the URP was the third and uh, it has a lot of stake in the Jubilee. So for a vice chairman or uh, uh, sector general, the sentiments of uh, um, uh, Tuju mm -hmm. and uh, for your information, Tuju is also on the chopping board. He yes, might also yeah. be going very soon mm -hmm. because these are people who hold so much stake in uh, Jubilee. And uh, I've seen people have started revamping uh, uh, Moruban parties like uh, DP and PNU in preparation for the 2022 elections. And this could be another, you know, another vehicle for those who feel disgruntled in the Jubilee to leave Jubilee and uh, join PNU and uh, DP. But uh, it's normal again for coalition when you look at the history of coalition formations from um, 20 to, to 92 when Ford came into place, then uh, there were wrangles, then the split from Ford uh, Kenya to Ford Asili. Ford people also came. You know, then we came to 2002, we had NAC. NAC yeah. also, after election, it split. Then uh, uh, we had PNU towards 207. PNUs after the elections, it also died, you know, uh, slotted, but still, you know, existing in paper. Ne then we have the Jubilee. So what is happening in Jubilee is not uniquely Jubilee affair, but it's because of um, the kind of politics and the nature of politics of our environment. Mm. We tend to form political parties as uh, uh, special vehicles to take us through a certain electoral process. And uh, once we are done with that process, once we, are, we reach there, then we don't see the value of this party. So it's uh, political realignments have started and we, we are going to see much uh, from uh, <coughs> moving forward. We are going to see big weeks shifting. Uh, 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 goalposts yeah. and uh, you know looking for relevance in other political parties we are going to see other coalitions coming up uh, so far you are hearing rumors of Kanu you know Amani coalition and maybe ODM and all those other parties coming together then you see DP is also going to come up with his own formations and you know and coalitions of um, like-minded uh, uh, political players mm -hmm. so as we move towards 2022 i think we are expecting so much uh, uh, politically in terms of uh, political realignments yes and something you mentioned i found interesting just before i move to you um so you you're saying that kenya as a whole our politics is based on coalitions and those coalitions have been forming and breaking, forming and breaking, and that's exactly yeah. what is happening. What's happening, especially with the case that mm -hmm. we are talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Yes. So just to come again about that uh, issue, I, I think our coalitions, as we stand now, um, the nature of our political formations are uh, established on ethnic and uh, regional basis. And uh, once, um, then we have this a uh, uh, person, a figure person. I call them, uh, you know, uh, personality kind of uh, personality syndrome yes. in politics. So when these people come together and they uh, set up, you know, le regional uh, kingpins. Uh, uh, in the name of those people carrying the aspirations of the other, the, the rest of the region or the larger community. Yes. So these people come together and form the so-called uh, coalitions. But these uh, co coalitions are mainly formed um, because of interest and uh, on a quicksand. Mm -hmm. That at the end of the day, if these big wigs don't agree at the helm, then they 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 dissolve. And we have always been reminded about MOUs that are never, you know, fulfilled. We are on reminded of uh, people hiding other cards under the table, yes. placing other, you know, such kind of things. Yeah, so it's good. all about interests. Mm. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, uh, yes. <coughs> people call uh, political coalitions marriages. I don't feel it's good. Marriages. Yes. Yeah. They are not marriages because they break marriages at least last. <laughs> but this, this, co this, uh, arrangements don't last mm. like uh, where's nasa where's NAC? like what he was saying they are not all there yeah yeah so uh um i think it's it's just uh, somebody called politics a game of many possibilities mm. and that there are no permanent enmity no permanent friendship there are only permanent interests yes yes so if uh you believe interfering with somebody's interest mm. future interest and is in a position to break it that is now what is happening that is what is yes happening. in fact now, i wanted to read for you something here Maura, 
tweeted. Yes, yeah, he ahead. said, Mo Maura. Ju yeah, okay. Maura, Maura, Honorable yes. Maura, Senator Maura. Yes. He said, Jubilee Party was a big tent with two poles, one called Uru Kenyatta and another one Ruto. A camel came in in the name of Handshake and tore the tent apart, slowly but surely. Now we have two teams, Team Kieleweke and Team Tanga Tanga. There are two teams. So he's saying, don't cry too much, Jubilee orphans. This came, this is a come we stay like relationship, which cul culminated into a one night stand, and now the marriage is falling apart. Watu wajipange mapema. That's what he said. Wow. So, you know, when you hear people like <laughs> Maura saying this, uh -huh. and uh, in fact, uh, this guy, the, 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 the guy who just resigned is called. Um, who, the vice okay. Murade. Uh, Murade. Yeah, when you hear them talk, when you hear people like Maura and, uh, and, and that guy talking that way, you know there's somebody, there's somebody, they are just, um, they are just shadows, they are just puppets, mm. but they are real. Oh, there's owners. someone in the back there's someone that's in controlling. The back. Uh, yeah, and there's a lot mm. of testing water in politics. Somebody's testing waters. Okay. Somebody's like, or even preparing people at their backyards, like he said, they are kingpins. So the kingpins are preparing people at their backyards that should mm. be prepared for this. Right. Yes. And once it serves a purpose, like you were saying, it breaks apart. Yeah, it's just it like apart. tissue paper. After using it, you forget about it. Okay. Yeah, it remains, <laughs> it remains history. You have very interesting analogies, <laughs> <laughs> just like tissue paper. <laughs> and I also like what, um, what the tweet that you just read, by the way. And I want to move on to something that um, is a bit different. There were remarks that Moses' career made regarding the development in Mount Kenya. And these remarks were directed to, to president. our president. Yes. And you know, people felt as if, ah, you shouldn't have said these things. You know, it's, it's a little unprofessional of you to express your views in this way. But he was also getting support from some people who thought that what you're saying is true and there's no reason why you should hide the truth and the truth should be spoken. Now, those two opposing views, I also have two guests over here, and I'd like to hear your views about what those remarks mean to you. I'm his junior. As a citizen of this country. I am you're his junior, so his jun I would like to start oh, so that he will be having. Uh, shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't your seniors. <laughs> shouldn't you know you the, the, the juniors talk first, then the seniors. If there is a pre deputy president and a president, deputy president talks first, then the, the president. <laughs> well, what, a <laughs> <laughs> what a title. What a title. Okay. 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 Uh, you so you, you, you fought for way. your position. Go ahead. Uh, Moses Kuria hmm. is a sanguine. A sanguine or personality in, 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 Yeah, in, in psychology, there are sanguines and melancholics. Melancholics think what they want to speak first, mm. synthesize it, then speak it after it's been synthesized. Uh, okay. Sanguines, I see where you're going. Sanguines speak, <laughs> then think, oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah? oh, what have I said? So that's what Moses Kuria is. He's a sanguine, and he's a political sanguine. Mm. Like, uh, he will speak. And then how many apologies of Moses Kuria have we had? Oh. So many of them. He I will speak. Countless. Yeah, and I think he's excited by the crowd. Hmm. When the crowd is like, hey, yes, yes. The, the more yes you give him or the more yes you give him, the more he will speak out of what he planned to speak. Yes. So I think uh, he really didn't plan to, to, to speak <laughs> what he spoke. He just spoke because of the crowd and because he speaks, then thinks what he has spoken. So you think he didn't mean what yeah, he said? Yeah, I, I, he didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. Because there's, I, you can't say that, that Central has been, or Man Kenya has been marginalized. Yes. When, when all the senior positions in the government, you hear the Kikuyu names, the Meru names, and all that. In fact, uh, it's only Handshake that is bringing other names now. Mm -hmm. But before that, and the entirely 2013, uh, it was like um, a, a Kikuyu and a, a Kalenjin government entirely. Certain ethnic yes. groups. So, yes. So you can't say that some place has been marginal, marginalized when, they are, when all the names are there. So I think he didn't mean it. It was just excitement like, to, mm. to please the crowd. Right. That's my take. Mm. Okay. Oh, thank you very much for bringing in a very serious discussion. And uh, I feel there has been uh, a lot of disquiet from uh, the Mount Kenya region in terms of uh, performance of the His Excellency or the performance of Jubilee government. 
You know, during campaign, there were those excitements. You had slogans like Kumira Kumira and, you know, those kind of things, eh? that people could even carry the sequence from the hospital to go and vote. There was a lot of excitement in the name that uh, uh, the, 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 the hopes were, expectations were high, and the, uh, and the imagination that after uh, the Jubilee government takes power and the foundation that Uhuru and the Ruta had made, in 2013, 2017, then it's going to continue with those uh, kind of development. Then uh, they are realizing that uh, even in 2013, 2017, the Jubilee government might have concentrated so much in terms of infrastructural development in other parts than uh, you know what Kibaki did uh, in Central. So there has been that disquiet and. Uh, Okay, they are mamas because you need to protect uh, the king. You don't, you don't want to expose the king's nakedness and say, okay, uh, our king is naked. But um, looking from the sentiments coming from even when you go to um, to people doing, uh, uh, you know, uh, petty merchandises and selling on the streets, mm -hmm. you listen to them, they will tell you uh, how hard... Uh, this government has been to even uh, small businesses and you know it's uh, it pains them so much because these are people who woke up around mid uh, midnight to go and line up uh, to vote and uh, seeing that the development is now going uh, to other parts of the country and is not um, you know facing them then uh, they feel uh, betrayed they feel cheated and uh, another thing just to support what my colleague here is talking about the issue of um, sharing uh, government resources and you know sharing government positions and appointments yes there have been uh, an increasing level of um, people from uh, Central Kenya or Mount Kenya region and Kalenjin Plum uh, government positions. Other regions are given as a token, like, you know, just pick somebody, some names, who are not even, um, uh, you know, to, to feel a regional balance, to make Jubilee government look like, you know. But people who are appointed to represent those regions, members of those regions don't feel well represented in the government. They say, and who is that? Where did they come from, you know? And uh, who, who knows we him? Yeah, we have never even heard about him, you know. So it does not, these people do not connect with the population that they, 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 they hope to, uh, to represent. Another thing, uh, looking at the uh, Moses Kuria statement, it might have, um, uh, it might have used one stone to beat two birds, you know. And uh, one thing that's coming up from uh, uh, so many people is that maybe Kuria is trying to set up um, uh, a scenario where uh, another Kikuyu presidential uh, candidate will come in and they will say, okay, we'll, you, you can see, even who was there, but uh, Kibak was there, so so was there, and we did not benefit, we did not get any development. Mm -hmm. So having another Kikuyu president has no problem. We can, yeah, we, we don't benefit. They will give example for Baringo, you see. Uh, people in Baringo, Moi was in power for 24 years, they are still eating, uh, you know, wild, uh, you know, wild berries and, you know, those, be, uh, they are always starving. Yeah. So, so that we say, okay, then uh, as a country we don't need, uh, Kumbe president doesn't have so much uh, powers, you know, he can be president, but you don't benefit it yeah. at the expense of other uh, other communities and at the same time now looking at the uh, uh, political gameplay between Ruto and um, the the Uru uh, people he might be preparing a way for for for, for Ru Ruto's ascension to power and say okay our people did not benefit so much from Uru so uh, we can support Ruto because yeah. from another community We're who has been working, benefit. then he will bring benefit to us. Eh? Yeah. So it might be a two-way uh, a two-way scenario. Looking at his statements, but uh, entirely speaking, it's uh, something that is uh, talked quietly within uh, the Mount <coughs> Kenya region. I've been to several parts. Uh, you can't see a significant development. What, when you were there, uh, you don't uh, see any significant development? Yeah, uh, yeah, you don't see Personally. anything. Apart from these uh, waivers of the coffee farmers where he goes and says, okay, we are going to waive the, you know, the loans that are owned by farmers. We are going to pay so and so, you know, su yes. such kind of things. Yes. But you don't see uh, a serious infrastructure like uh, a serious road development, a serious, you know, factory being set up, a serious, you know, mm. those kind of things. So maybe, um, and even uh, looking at uh, his own constituency where Moskure is an MP, roads there are uh, very pathetic, you know. And, is, uh, so this, and uh, uh, yesterday I saw some banners, eh? 
saying this is uh, uh, President Kenyatta's, uh, you know, county and constituency. Then uh, they are, you know, yeah. you know, pe people feel disgusted and feel feel there's so much also. disappointed and feel yeah. uh, there's disquiet, uh, mm. and uh, also adding to the economic hardshipness. You know, some people feel, okay, during Kibaki time, things were quite easy, you know. Now he's also proposing taxing even the Mamambogas who are just doing, you know, petty uh, yeah. um, uh, trade. Yes. They're also going to be taxed at 15% uh, of their uh, annual uh, uh, gross income. So when you look at those uh, things that uh, Uru is coming, the policies that Uru is coming up with actually is not um, meant for uh, a common a common mwananji. Mm. Yeah. Yes. You know, it, uh, uh, me, I like what uh, what is happening. The the fact that somebody can be, can be like feel dissatisfied that their person is not developing their backyards. Okay. I think it will ease the political tension and the, it's our son, our man, our person, a person oh. from our <laughs> tribe kind of politics. Yes. Yeah, because people will ultimately understand that the fact that your son is in power doesn't mean he will be more developed than other areas. Yes. Yeah, so that people will start be looking at policies, at manifestos, mm -hmm. at some other substantial things yeah. like uh, no Kenyan politics is still so weak and our democracy is just like still a drama that people can <laughs> complain even Moses Kuria himself can complain that we are not being developed but when Uru will now President Uru will now vie against somebody maybe from coast mm -hmm. he will forget all that and say our son our son our is son. vying yes, yes so the, the fact that people people will realize yeah. that our backyards that the backyards of those who are in power are not much developed than other other parts of the country mm -hmm. now will bring like now mature politics to Kenya. Yes. I encourage it. You're in fact, that. yeah, in fact, Moses Kuria should expose more of what is not happening <laughs> uh, in the, but in the, in the backyards. But in the beginning, you said Uru. he didn't mean what he said. Yeah, I know. But I, now you are. It's like you're in support of what he said. He didn't mean it, but it's good. He didn't mean it, but it's good. But it's good anyway. There's some kind of importance yeah, it, to what it he should said. Do more. This yeah. ultimate. Uh, importance into that. People will see that the fact that your person is in power doesn't mean you will benefit more. Mm. So yes. you get to see the man behind the tribe. I, I right. even I even think of doing a story of <laughs> of, of President Uru's neighbor who is very poor. So that people <laughs> will see that the fact that your person is in power so that people will choose like I can choose a Giriyama mm. to be a president if he present to me a better manifesto mm -hmm. than our guy. For mm. my case Baba. Mm. <laughs> for your case. <laughs> well, thank you for letting us know your case. <laughs> I'm just seeing a really big rift in the Jubilee, um, in the Jubilee party, as we started to discuss at the beginning. Yes. And I just wanted to ask what this means for Kenya, because as time, like you said, it's only been a year, even barely. As time continues to go, we've just, I mean, right now, they're falling apart. How is it going to be in the years to come? And the, dis the disquiet you're talking about, do you think it's actually going to turn into something um, more than just disquiet? Will it maybe cause some kind of security unrest, in your opinion? And do you think these uh, political oppositions, or do you find that the opposition is no longer an opposition anymore? Because in my view, the opposition is no longer an opposition. There are just so many oppositions <laughs> until, yeah, the original opposition is no longer an opposition anymore. What does this mean for our country? Joy, you have asked so many questions. Uh, yes. Brought together. But I'll start from the point of um, the experiences or what's happening in Jubilee uh, Party. As I said in the beginning, this is not uniquely Jubilee. It's something that happens throughout the electoral cycle of every electoral year, especially when the time of the president is coming to an end. There's that, uh, you know, struggle for power. People want to, to, to take over. Succession politics is also at play. Then uh, when you look at uh, Jubilee government, Jubilee party as it is, it was a marriage of convenience uh, arising from the 207, the experiences of 207. So 2013 elections was held in terms of ethnic mobilization and you know, as a deterrent of what, uh, a repeat of what happened in 2007. So these people, the two bigwigs, the, who are also the, you know, the, in the teaser, the ICC, mobilized their um, uh, backyards, their political uh, uh, 
uh, no followers and uh, ethnic groups in the name that if you don't elect us then we are going to be jailed and it was very clear we are the masses of, of you guys if we are we elect us as president and deputy then we can defend ourselves but if you leave us then you want us to die in, uh, in, the, in the foreign land and it really whipped the emotions of people leading to the elections now that uh, 2017 was a bit you know was a bit um, calm in terms of mobilization but we have had cases of maybe electoral malpractices and so on um, and uh, uhuru was worried to be a, a one a one term president in the history of kenya and um, he wanted support he really really wanted he dearly wanted this support from uh, uh, other 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 regions so he was elected and after election he during campaign he was saying okay i'll be there for this term only then i leave these are promises he made publicly then for another term uh it will be uh william ruto to take over for 10 years so he prepared ruto supporters emotionally they knew after uhuru we are the ones who are going to take over uh this leadership then uh, when you look at even that period <coughs> when there was these uh, repeat elections and uh, ODM or NASA was agitating for a view of the electoral you know, system and saying, okay, let's review the electoral uh, management system so that we can have a fair playing ground. Uh, Uru said, uh, don't discuss with me issues of electoral you know, management. That one you will discuss with Ruto when, uh, you know, after the, the my, my term ends. Eh? So in all his sentiments, he has assured Ruto supporters and he has assured Ruto's community that it will be Ruto. So starting now looking at the, the sentiments that are coming out, eh? some people are feeling betrayed. And that's why you, 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 you have seen even uh, some leaders from Mount Kenya saying, uh, I had this Waruguru from uh, Laikipia saying it's a betrayal in the city and uh, these people are portraying us from Mount Kenya to be people who cannot be trusted by anybody. Mm -hmm. So we are not going to look at into it, we are going to support Ruto because this is a commitment that our leaders made and we are going to support it. You know, so it's like, okay, we cannot trust Kikuyus because when you do with them agreement, they cannot, you know, honor it, you know, uh, they are, and some, some people are telling me, you know, Kikuyus have a very high IQ when it comes to to politics and anything that uh, they do in terms of uh, political realignment they are looking ahead eh? and seeing what's our stake what's our place eh? in all this so the noise that you are hearing maybe it could be pushing ruto to pick a kikuyu as a, uh, a deputy president so that it's, it's also balances because when you look at the whole gameplay you don't see uh okay the kikuyu nation is looking at it and saying okay what's our place what's our stake Okay, if we support this guy, what are we gaining from it? If he goes and picks a running mate from Western or from Nyanza or from where, what's our stake? So we need to begin from the defense point of view that we are there, we negotiated, and this you give us this. But again, uh, Jubilee is likely to die. Uh, parties are going to emerge, yes. Uh, I've told you DP yeah. and PNU are being revamped, yeah. maybe to cut off the interest of Mount Kenya region. And uh, Ruto is also busy shopping for other parties that sure. will, yeah, yeah, that will come up and registering, you know. So Jubilee is likely to die because of interest. The way he said, is, uh, it, it was a marriage of convenience, and uh, it's inevitable mm. that uh, is likely to be uh, the party in 20, 2022. Okay. <coughs> Jubilee is in ICU. Jubilee is in ICU. Yeah, it's <laughs> dying very soon. If mm. we'll be here for the next one year, with Jubilee will be history. That's how parties. The died. next one year, you feel yes, like Jubilee that's will be history. How that's died. where our country is headed. Yes, that's where how P we can predict this. Mm. There's something called um, uh, like you can predict. You can if you know that sun has been rising every every day. You know tomorrow it will yes. rise again. Yeah, mm. it's called uh, induction. It's called induction in, in, in science. So the, we can induct that Jubilee will die very soon. This is, these are just, uh, the, what we are seeing are just symptoms. And, and I, I want to, to, to first, uh, first start from what he was saying of the promises of the, all that, of the debts that uh, the central people have, the, have debts from, from the 
the Rift Valley people and all that. Mm. Um, yeah, if you have a debt, if you have my debt, which you took last year, yes, and then you took his debt yeah. yesterday, which one should you pay first? The one that I the one that you took before. Most, yeah. yeah, there was a That'll debt. Be there was a debt between uh, the senior Jomo Kenyatta and the Ramo <laughs> Okay. It I see was not paid. Going. There was also a debt between okay. Kibaki and Raela. It was not paid. Now the debt that was borrowed yesterday. People should not be just like, pay, pay, pay. You, you want should pay. You, 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 I know you read about Okonkwo, this guy who <laughs> had a long list of debts. Yes. So when he came to, to, to borrow you, mm. he would uh, like tell you, I'll pay you tomorrow and all that and all those. And then when you go to like, so you go to like, give me my money, he would give you a long list of debts and tell you you are number 72. I've not even paid number three. So please be patient. <laughs> yeah. I have a long list of debts. Mm. So there's that you the, the people from Central have that long list of debts. <laughs> the people who borrowed yesterday should be patient and wait. Yes. That the first people should be paid, paid first. First. If they will come later. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> should understand. Oh, okay. The, 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 the of. politics of debts uh, okay. Uh, there there are people talk about paying debts and everything. But you, you see the and that's because of our uh, our low development in politics. Our politics has not yet uh, matured to a level where we talk about ideologies and policies and you know, look at somebody and say, okay, this one can, uh, can lead, can have, can lead to development of this nation. We still look at um, politics in terms of it's our time to eat. Yes, in the words yeah. of, uh, uh, the, the, uh, what was his name? This guy who wrote the, this book. He has the two same <laughs> names. Yes. So if it's uh, our it's time to eat, to then uh, uh, people tend to feel that it's if our man is at the top, then we are going to eat. That narrative has been there, and it has to be challenged so that we start building our democracy in terms of ideology, in terms of policies, in terms of manifestos, what this person is bringing on the table. But manifestos have table. I, I don't. Manifestos, manifestos have are there. Us. They are there, but you know, because of the uh, ethnic interests and, you know, political realignment, we don't even look at those manifestos. How many people read those manifestos? It's true. It's just because Raheel is there and uh, Baba Mesema, Baba Alison Mayote, mm. you had the constitution review when they were saying, okay, I'm not reading this constitution because Baba has read and they have said it's good. Or Baba said it's bad, so I'm opposing it. Yes. You know, without looking at the content of those um, those things. What they so want to manifestos bring to the table. are there. I don't know if you looked at the NASA and uh, Jubilee ma manifesto. And for your information, I'm lucky to have participated as one of the experts <laughs> in writing the, the NASA manifesto. Oh, really? Yes. Well, so that's wonderful. I understand the, 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 the contents. But again, in our development of the NASA manifesto, what we're doing is comparing with the Jubilee manifesto and maybe building on what? They, they have, have indicated and you know uh, subtracting and but all those things when you look at the pillars when you look at the social political and economic issues that were being discussed is almost the same mm -hmm. the difference was the language mm -hmm. and how it's captured so th th that's where as a country we are because we don't differ when you look at uh, developing the democracies like um, like uh, us or uh, uk uk do not even have a written constitution they they rely on common laws yeah. Uh, things that are passed from one generation to another. Mm -hmm. They don't have any written constitution that we say, okay, we want to review this constitution. Yes, but their policy is yeah. still their policy is still yeah, they work. Have those policies they are down. So it's, they are it's less just common. They are less hypocritical yeah. like us. They're as we have good written good like, constitution like and it, uh, it, it <laughs> participated in writing it. Eh? Yeah. But we don't know what they wrote. They did a good work. But up to now, <laughs> who, who read? We don't, we don't know. We didn't uh, But whose fault is that? We, we, it's, it's the Kenyans, uh, Kenyans fear reading. Yeah, Kenya, Kenyans fear reading. They fear reading. If you want to hide something from Kenyans, just I put, in, put the in a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Nowadays people read Facebook. But we and, don't need know. it. We <laughs> didn't need it. If so, if my political <laughs> campaign has said we, we, we are going to go this way. So people just yeah. move that way. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Or if somebody was given you money. But shouldn't we be moving it. away from that narrative we, of we, my, my political kingpin? It is if shouldn't if we, we be allow, moving and now focusing on no, okay, this is so and so's manifesto, this is so and so's and compare, manifesto. Uh, yes. Compare them and choose. I think I'll follow this. We one. will if we will start letting people speak their mind. Mm. Like now, if they didn't force Moses Kuria to apologize, it would be good. 
Yeah, because he would speak his mind. Now people from the backyard say, ah, apologize, you did what? Because he spoke his mind, and his mind is against the majority from the, his backyard. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the moment people will be left to speak their minds, mm -hmm. it will be now very easy. Like now, if somebody like Tuju is really is a bad man in Nyanza, he's not wanted because he speaks his mind. So the fact that we'll have a real democracy. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I I told you before we started, or when we started, is that we have a, like a dramatization of democracy. What we have, mm. dramatization. Even the manifestos and all that, we just dramatize that we have them, but we don't <laughs> practice them. What we practice, what we follow, number one is our tribe, <laughs> number two is our stomachs. Yes. Mm. Now, now, those are for the lower seats. Mm. When, when like uh, in, uh, in Central, where all those who are vying there are from one tribe, mm. now you start leaving tribe, you follow your, your tummy. tummy. Your tummy, yeah. Okay. So, like he was saying, it's our turn to eat. Like the way, the, I, by the way, I love that book. It's one of my favorite by Miguna Miguna. That's the no, name. No, 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 it was written Michaela by Wrong. Uh, yeah, Michael. Yes. Mm. It's yes. such, but it was in his words mm. that she was writing. It was so compelling to read that. Yeah, and Badu mm. Tukwapo Apo. We're still in that. It's our turn to eat. Mm. And I really hope we can move away from that. <laughs> but then, because Kenya is not going to grow until we can move from that, we until people can just decide. Uh, but what I'm realizing is the past one year a lot of things have become hard on kenyans especially taxes i mean life has just is, uh, become is high, life has just become something else and mm. you know it's reached a point where some people are questioning the choices they've made for you know leadership and things like that and that's when you do open your eyes and realize oh okay so maybe it's not necessarily about my turn to eat and our people's turn to eat this is about all the kenyans turn to eat it's about all of us benefiting from our government, benefiting from leadership. Mm -hmm. And in order for that to happen, I feel that, uh, like I said before, we need to really look at what our leaders are bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. And if they don't bring to the table what they said they're going to bring <laughs> to the table, if you call yourself an adult, you need to be smart enough to know that but, oh, but this, uh, this particular choice is not working But out. again, Joy, before we, we move forward, maybe, there's something that's uh, very interesting in our politics. When you look at the jostling for this uh, presidency, it's like uh, there's so much rewards when it comes to political uh, political power and political uh, positions. Maybe in Kenya we might want to you know to reduce the incentives attached to political uh, seats and especially the presidency. But again, uh, but again, uh, Ruto started his campaigns early, so is the focus. But Ruto having declared his presidency does not deter anybody, even you, Joy, from running for Kenya to be Kenya's president. So let us not focus so much on Ruto will be the next president, oh, so you, who and who. Let us, you know, let us expand this democratic space. Let anybody come in, you know, yeah. those who have policy, let them sell. I saw the other day David was very mad in, uh, in Western, saying, why do people allowing Ruto to come to Western? And you know, <laughs> taking all my MPs <laughs> as if he has been locked <laughs> not to go to Rift Valley or any other part of the country and sell his mm. uh, policies. And Kayesu, how would you like to conclude? Because it's about that time. What would, uh, be, your, what would be your last Kenya statement? Now, I want to, to your last statement. as a student leader, I want to, to enlighten the nation. Thank you for, by the way, that's that. Cool. There is no longer NASA and Jubilee. <laughs> it's dying very fast. There are two camps. Mm. As, uh, as Kuria, uh, not Kuria, Maura, as Senator Maura did it. There's team Kieleweke and the team Tanga Tanga. Mm. So choose the team you want to be in because that is the future of Kenyan politics from now up to elections. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was such an interesting discussion. I really enjoyed my time with you, both of you. And I just like, before we conclude, I'd like to shout out Salome Mukami and Stella Mathu, who are watching from Kandara. Just a big up. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys, your viewing means a lot to us. Remember, you can reach out to us. You can also converse with us and share your views on what we've just discussed on Twitter. You can find us on uh, Y254 channel, on Instagram, Y254 underscore channel, and on Facebook, Y254 channel. My name is Joy Mochache, and this was Youth and Politics. Thank you so much for tuning in. Do have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Monday. Thank you.